All right, welcome back. We're reminded when it comes to love, you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but you can judge a man by his billboard. Riley Carlson went to Manchester, England to find out. Few would bet the road to love leads through a spot like this. But for about $600, a British man thought it was worth the gamble. I was struggling a little bit on the dating apps, and I thought I'd do something different to try and stand out. As a joke, I just said, at this rate, I'll have to put my face on the billboard. 30-year-old Mark Rofe decided he had nothing to lose. The billboard sends potential matches to this website, letting them know he's six feet tall, has kissed more than three women, and not surprisingly, he works in advertising. I just thought, if I've got these marketing skills, then I may as well use it, you know, to enhance kind of my love life. I would see it as quite clever. Um, it's quite creative, but may, some people may see it as desperate. You never know these days, anything can work. Well, it made us all read it. Somebody might want to date Mark, you never know. At last count, more than 2,000 somebodies had applied from all around the globe. Matchmaker Sarah Louise Ryan says a bold move is sometimes what it takes. Mark, having put himself out there quite physically and literally, like he's really seeing the return on that. Now comes the hard part, searching through all those emails, hoping he finds the one. I mean, I'm very optimistic now. I think if I don't find someone within that, then maybe there is something wrong with me. Mark hopes finding love is as easy as finding ad space. Riley Carlson, CBS News, Manchester, England. And Mark has set up his first date from this experience. The Billboard Bachelor went out on Valentine's Day for drinks. All right, the season of love focuses on partners, but in California, the focus is on appreciation. John Blackstone has that story. At the age of 104, Major Bill White remains every inch the Marine he was in World War II. In the battle for Iwo Jima, a grenade exploded beside him. He was proceeded to blow hell out of me. He's seen combat, but he's never seen so many Valentines. You gotta be kidding. Every day for weeks, Valentine's cards and gifts have been arriving by the truckload at the Oaks Assisted Living Center. All addressed to Major White. And all of a sudden, out of a clear blue sky, all hell breaks loose. It all started simply enough when staff at the Oaks and Major White's daughter Mary made a small request on social media. We were hoping, you know, he's 104 years old, we get 104 Valentines, that would be cool. The last account somebody ever gave me was 140,000 different pieces. 140,000. Now, almost every surface at the assisted living center is covered with Valentines. They come from school children and veterans and families who know the sacrifice of service. This is my, both my father and father-in-law served in World War II. Sadly, they are both gone. Mary and Major White read as many as they can. It just says, you've stolen the hearts of America. So many hearts. Perhaps never before has Valentine's Day brought one person more affection. The whole thing has just been beyond my feeble powers of comprehension. John Blackstone, CBS News, Stockton, California. And we have a special treat for our MacGyver fans. Here's an exclusive behind-the-scenes tour of the show's Atlanta set. The guides are none other than MacGyver, also known as Lucas Till, and newcomer Henry Ivan Cusick. Check it out. Hi, my name is Henry Cusick, and I've just joined this new show, uh, MacGyver. Ooh, what is this warm, magical euphoria I'm feeling? Hello. We have guests. Come on in. Here's a rocket I had from the first episode. And I think it was a callback to the original MacGyver in an episode where he had a rocket on his shoulder. What's with the baseball? Did you ever play? Yeah, we did. We had an episode where we played against the CIA. A lot of this furniture is sweet. These chairs, yeah. they're great. These are old um, airplanes. No? Exactly, That's yeah, these airplanes. are. Everything is like from something else, isn't it? Yes, correct. Now we're going to be quiet because they're shooting in the other room. All of this cereal has been here for four years. Another little secret is these don't ever work. That's painted to look like it's actually on. You can smell the mountain air from here. We have a backdrop that makes it look like it's LA. We have a night backdrop and a day backdrop. I love how the set has so many things that say so much about you. You're a surfer. Yeah. A skier. <laughs> You love darts. It's all in the detail. 
This blows my mind. Oh, the car. Get it from this angle. Yeah. This is the Maserati. And now if That's you... That's before, and this is the aftershock. These are real holes. You stick real your finger in holes. It's the kind of stuff we do on this show. This is Meredith Eaton. Hi. Yeah, we're just giving them a tour of everywhere we work here. Oh, are you seeing the secret places? Yeah, exactly. Are we're trying to give them secrets the... and stuff like what, that. What's, so. what, what's a good place to see? It's secret, I can't tell you. Oh, burn. Um, in the war room. This is the war room. I'm sure you can see the screen back here. They're actually working right now, so we can't get in at this very moment. But uh, you're actually seeing actors in their natural environment. You wish to come aboard? <laughs> Yes. Here we are in the Phoenix jet. This is uh, specifically Russ Taylor's jet. It's, that's believe. right. This is my jet. And we've shot quite a lot in this, actually. These walls yeah. move. It's actually very easy, very comfortable to shoot on this plane. Can I introduce you? Yes. <laughs> she might be a little shy. This is Sarah Downer. She has been with us since the beginning. All, yeah, all four years. One. Yeah. yeah. And not only is she a lovely human being, but she's so talented, and she makes me look good on every single episode of the show. This is the classic leather jacket for my MacGyver. Richard Dean Anderson had a little bit different design, right? Correct. Yeah, and this was definitely a Peter Lenkoff design here, right? Am I right in it saying is. that? Yeah. Inspired by the original? Correct. With Take Peter's uh, Peter's vision laid on top of it. That concludes our tour. So I'll see you guys next time. And you can see MacGyver Fridays here at 7 p.m. on WCBI. All right, you may have made sand castles as a child, but wait until you see these ice castles. We'll take you there next on Mid Morning. Welcome back. The CBS series American Wonders explores places that make America wonderful, from majestic natural landscapes to spectacular man-made creations. This morning, you'd be better you'd better be dressed warmly. We visit a seasonal attraction called Ice Castles. Janet Shamlin recently went to Colorado to take us on a tour. It's like stepping into another world. 90 minutes west of Denver in Dillon, Colorado. It's rainbow. <laughs> when the sun goes down, this frozen playground is the hottest ticket in town. I like it a lot. It's really cool how they built this place. It's kind of like Elsa's kingdom. And there are plenty of little Elsas who come to see the tunnels and slides, tall fountains, and oversized thrones, all made of ice, 20 million pounds of it. Gorgeous. Do that again, one more time. It's a photographer's dream, and Kayla Everhart uh, thought it would make the perfect senior photo. Yeah. Until she took her coat off. It's like 22 degrees out here. Yes, it is. What are you thinking? <laughs> Very cold. <laughs> the annual attraction is a Herculean effort, taking about eight weeks to build. Yeah. And hours each day, grooming and growing it larger by making thousands of icicles and adding them in layers, one by one, to the sculpted castle, which stretches taller each week. Roughly 10 million gallons of water are used to make the ice. Once the castle is taken down and then melted, the water goes back to the land. I just have a feeling like, oh, is this ice going to come down on me? <laughs> it, is, it is not. It is not. It stays where it is until we close down for the season we have to bring in heavy equipment brett christensen moved from california to utah 20 years ago and started playing with the ice outside his home his backyard creations grew i went home and put a sprinkler on a tripod of wood and and uh, turned it on and lo and behold everything got covered with ice so the next year i made a, a large wood frame turned on the water and and we had had this little ice structure. Did you start thinking, wow, I can turn this into a company? Uh, not, not at that point. I started out the next season with some blocks of ice and snowballs, and partway through the season, I started fusing icicles in formation, and it turned out to be this magic formula. A magic formula that's turned into six ice castle locations across North America, open several months each winter, with hundreds of thousands of visitors. How has climate change impacted, you know, some of your operations? I'm not going to lie, it's been challenging. We have, um, this year's been warm. In Wisconsin, for example, 
they're having one of the warmest years, warmest winters they've ever had. Uh, we couldn't open until January 31st, which is like a month later than what we usually want to open. Lighting built into the castle gives it an out-of-this-world, ethereal feel and has turned the often sold-out attraction into a social media lover's dream. It's just beautiful how they make it and I just, I had to see it. Are you going to Instagram it? Of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Otherwise it's like you weren't here, right? Exactly. exactly. If it's not on social media, it never existed. Photos like this caught the attention of Low Brown, who came with friends to celebrate her 30th birthday. <laughs> Can't wait, I'm on live right now, what's up? <laughs> the towering creation and epic experience just might be the coolest thing in Colorado. And we will be right back to wrap things up. All right, be sure you stay connected with us. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter and Instagram. We enjoy hearing from you. See you back here next time.